Hello and welcome back. Today I'm going to make a quick video about one of the oldest mistakes in rocketry. That is, the pendulum rocket fallacy. You might have seen this picture before. It's the first liquid-fueled rocket ever, built by Robert Goddard. Also, just to be clear, this bit on the outside is actually a frame. The rocket's just that part in the middle. That confused me when I saw this picture. Now, by modern standards, this is a weird-looking rocket. Mainly because the engine is on top and the fuel tank is underneath it. The fuel tank under the rocket engine. That sounds like a terrible idea, and it is. But Goddard thought it would be worth the risk because it would make the rocket more stable. His thinking was simple. By having the weight below the thrust, it's like holding up a weight on a string, rather than trying to balance it on your hand like a pencil meaning that the rocket should naturally stabilize itself. Now, you're probably thinking one of two things right now. One, that makes sense. Two, oh my god, it's the pendulum rocket fallacy again, I swear. If I have to see one... <laughs> For those of you in Camp 1, unfortunately you're wrong, but I understand why you think it makes sense. Even I've made this mistake, and it's really an easy trap to fall into. Even Robert Goddard, the guy who literally invented modern rocket engines, made this same mistake. He very quickly discovered that this idea didn't work, however. Just look at his journal entry from the test launch. The first flight of a rocket using liquid propellants was made yesterday at Aunt Effie's farm in Auburn. After a number of seconds, it rose slowly until it cleared the frame, and then at express train speed curved over to the left, and striking the ice and snow still going at a rapid rate. In other words, his naturally stable rocket immediately turned over and flew into the ground. It turns out the idea of a pendulum rocket is a fallacy, hence the name. Now let's talk about why. So we'll start by looking at why a pendulum works, and then we'll look at how a rocket is different from a pendulum. A pendulum, when at an angle, has the force of gravity pulling straight down, and the force from the pivot pointing straight up. Without a pivot, the weight would fall straight down, but with the pivot, the pendulum rotates. To make this explanation easier, I'm going to move the pendulum up to 90 degrees. The force of gravity pushes on the center of mass, meaning that it won't cause any rotation. But the force from the pivot is at the end of a long lever. That means that it will cause rotation because it's perpendicular to the center of mass. and that's why the pendulum as a whole rotates to be upright again. Now, let's replace that pivot with a rocket engine. Do you notice what changed? The force from the pivot pointed up. The force from the rocket is pointing sideways. This means it will not cause any rotation because it's in line with the center of mass. In other words, the rocket will not self-stabilize. No matter which way this rocket is pointing, the engine itself won't make it want to rotate. For a pendulum rocket to be stable, the engine would actually have to be on some sort of motor that moved it and kept it level. But if you're gonna move your engine and keep it level, you might as well stick it on the bottom so you aren't lighting your fuel tank on fire. That, and the fact that fuel likes to flow down, not up, is why all rockets, including SpaceX's landing rockets, have the engine on the bottom. Putting an engine on top of a rocket does not make it any more stable, and it makes the design much more complicated. So if you started this video in group 1 thinking that the pendulum rocket makes a little sense, hopefully now you know better. Now that's the main point of this video, but I do want to talk about why I made it. I was reminded of this idea of the pendulum rocket because of a collaboration between James Bruton and Ivan Miranda. Ivan didn't know how to stabilize his rocket using electronics, so he tried putting the thrust on top. So I did put the propellers on top, so the thrust is on the top pulling up and the weight of the rocket is pulling down. That way it self-stabilizes and I don't need to do any programming. Okay. Just like Goddard's rocket, his tipped over, slammed into the ground, and slid along it at a rapid rate. Pretty good top speed. Well, I've up. seen pretty good top speed. To be fair, James's rocket also crashed in this video, but it was able to stabilize itself somewhat, and really just needed some tuning. But seeing this video reminded me of a video back in 2016 from the Hacksmith. 
He has a project where he's trying to fly like Iron Man, and he decided that most of his thrust should be above his center of mass. In the previous video, there's quite a few comments about the pendulum rocket fallacy. And while we're quite aware of this, you have to remember, I'm not a rocket, and I'm not trying to fly like this. In fact, we're trying to hop. The predominant stabilization factors in rocket flight are drag. And since we're trying to hover, those don't come into play at all, which means the aerodynamics behind this flight project are quite a bit different than, say, a normal rocket flight. So it sounds like he's saying that the fallacy doesn't apply because he isn't worried about aerodynamics. I explained why there's no physical reason for a rocket to be stabilized by the engine being on top. It wasn't that aerodynamic forces overpowered the pendulum effect, it's that the pendulum effect does not exist. Not when in flight, not when hovering, and not even in a vacuum. Now if we go back to the first video, we can see some more of his arguments. He shows us that it's hard to balance something from underneath, but just like the pendulum, that's with the force pushing straight up instead of being locked in line with the rocket. He also shows this clip of a helicopter. Oh, I guess the helicopter can fly just as well upside down. Weird. I know a lot of the comments on our previous video was, Iron Man's thrust comes from his feet. Well, that might work in the first movie, but that's because it's a movie, and that's CGI, and he has a full exoskeleton which keeps his body rigid. So basically he's saying that if he's being lifted by his feet without an exoskeleton, he can't stay rigid. Uh, James? Um, you are literally standing. Not to mention, these exist. Now yes, both of these have their feet connected together, making it more of a hoverboard, but that's still closer to flying like Iron Man than a jetpack. But here is where James actually has an opportunity. At first glance, it looks like if you cut these boards in half and made them into two rocket boots, it would be really dangerous and the user could be like forced into doing the splits. But that's actually making the same mistake as with the pendulum fallacy. Look at what happens when you're doing the splits. Your weight pushes down in the middle, and the ground pushes your feet up on the outside. Like with the pendulum, your leg is acting as a lever, and that's forcing you deeper into the splits. No. 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 Uh. But if we replace the ground with rocket boots, the force changes. Instead of pushing your legs up and twisting them, it's actually pushing them in, meaning that you won't be forced into the splits at all. In fact, it seems like this would be safer than skiing. I really think it would be possible to split these hoverboards in two so you can have rocket boots and really fly like Iron Man. But that's just my idea for what could be a cooler project, and one that's more like Iron Man to fit the name. I am working on a gravity video, which is what that little teaser was about with the camera flying down to the surface of the Earth, so keep an eye out for that. Hopefully it will be done relatively soon. But for now, I'm Con Happy, and I will see you in the next video.